this seventh session on Ephesians 1, 1, and 2, we focus on what it means that Christians are called faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. It could mean believers in Christ, so the belief is in Christ, or it could mean faithful as we are rooted in Christ Jesus and drawing our faithfulness from him. The only other place where the word faithful is used in Ephesians is chapter 6, verse 21, so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. Faithful here probably doesn't mean believing in the sense that he's a Christian, since that's a given. He is faithful in the sense that he fulfills everything that a minister uh, is expected to be and to do. So I'm going to leave this just like they translated it here and ask, what does it mean for a Christian to be defined not only as saint, but as faithful in Christ Jesus? So, Father, we want to be found faithful according to your intention here through the Apostle Paul. So open our eyes to where this comes from, where it's going, and what it means for us as we live our lives as biblical Christians. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin by rooting faithfulness in God, then moving from God to his word, then moving from his word to our response to it, then moving from our response to it to other people's response to us as faithful. I think that's the way you get at the root of things in the Bible. So we start with God. Now may the God of peace, this is 1 Thessalonians 5, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus, he who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. So God is the original faithful one. He surely does what he has committed himself to do for his people. That faithfulness of God is rooted in God's godness. Now, if that sounds highfalutin to you, look at 2 Timothy 2, 12 and 13. If we endure We will also reign with him if we deny him. He will deny us. That's what Jesus said. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? Why? What's the root of his faithfulness? For he cannot deny himself. That's what I mean by his godness. God's faithfulness exists because he's God. That's the way God is. Look at Titus 1-2. Titus 1-2. We have hope of eternal life, which God who never lies. That's what it means to be God. God never lies. He is faithful to his word. He is utterly reliable. He is utterly dependable. He is utterly faithful God who never lies promised. When he promises, it's done. He never lies. He's God. That's what it means to be God, for he cannot deny himself. So God's godness, I mean God's faithfulness, unlike ours, is rooted in himself That's not the case with us. That's why I started with God, so that we would see the difference between our faithfulness and God's faithfulness and how radically important it is to draw the distinction because our faithfulness is rooted in His, not in ourselves. Here's Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. So God's faithfulness commits him to his promises, which means now 
What's this amazing use of language that his word is faithful? The saying is translated trustworthy, same word as we saw in Ephesians 1. Faithful Christians, we are faithful in Christ Jesus. You see that Greek word there? And so here, same word used to describe sayings. The saying is faithful, trustworthy, reliable, dependable, and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. In other words, God's God-rooted faithfulness now gets transmitted to his word, and we can talk about his word as faithful. So how does God's faithfulness get fleshed out in our faithfulness? Sarah gives us a clue in Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive even when she was past the age since she considered him faithful. This is God. She considered God faithful who had promised. So, faith in the human soul is the reckoning, deep, heartfelt reckoning of God as faithful to his promises. So our faithfulness is mediated to us through faith in God's faithfulness. We become faithful when we have faith in the faithful one. But faithful to what? Faithful in what sense? Here's the last text we'll look at. Revelation 2, 10 and 13. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Be faithful, Christian, unto death. And what does that mean? That means that you have now considered God's word, God's promise, God's faithfulness to his own godness and thus his faithfulness to his word and thus his faithfulness to all who trust his word, you have considered God faithful so that now you can be counted on to count on God and trust God and depend on God and rely upon God even unto death. In other words, God's faithfulness is more precious to you than life and will give you the crown of life. You hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness. Antipas was my faithful witness. What what does that mean? He was killed among you where Satan dwells. That means that when all the pleasures of life offered themselves to Antipas, if he would but be unfaithful. That is, he would cease to regard God as faithful, cease to regard God as trustworthy, cease to regard God's word as true and precious and reliable. If he would just stop, then they would give him life. And he wouldn't stop, and that was his faithfulness. So here's my definition back here in chapter 1 of of faithful in Christ Jesus. Let's put it like this. The faithfulness of Christians is what? They can be trusted depended on to do what? To do what? To trust and depend on God in 
Christ. They have their relationship with God through Christ and in Christ. They can be trusted and depended on to trust and depend on God in Christ unto death. That's who we are. That's who he's writing to in this letter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints. Oh, yes, the Holy One set apart, consecrated to God, taking on his character. And here's the mark of it. Who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. And their faithfulness is that they can be trusted, they can be depended on, they can be counted on, relied on, to trust and depend on and count on and rely upon God in Christ, no matter what they are threatened with. They will not turn away from their trust in God as their all-sufficient treasure. They won't. That's who we are. That's what it is to be a Christian. 